Caution, radioactive, no water contact. And that water comes out right here at the Clinch River. Welcome to the last video in my series of why I don't eat the fish I catch. Now I will be honest with you guys, I know absolutely nothing about this creek. All I know is there are signs that say no fishing and no water contact and they have radioactive symbols on them and multiple signs that say warning contaminated water and as you can see there's water flowing out of this into the clinch river just upstream about a mile is the boat ramp and a few more miles later is melton hill dam so i'm below melton hill dam right now every musky bass striper catfish that swims up to melton hill dam they pass right through this water and this water for the past, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years has been going downstream into the Tennessee River, into the Mississippi River. You have to think, how many years does it take for this contaminated water, potentially radioactive, I don't know. That was a muskie. I should have brought my muskie rod. I have thrown musky lures at this spot before. That was kind of cool. Now back to what I was saying, I mean, how long does it take for this water to make it to the Gulf of Mexico? And how long ago was the Manhattan Project? Now I'm actually not going to fish this spot. Like I said, I've cast musky lures at this spot before and around here, all around this area. And I like doing that in the middle of winter time because that's the best time to catch musky, at least in my opinion. What I am going to do, I'm going to go down river to another spot that's even more concerning than this. That's because I know a little bit about that spot. So let's head down river and get some poles in the water. Wow, there are a lot of muskies around here. Yep, I should have brought musky gear. Here's another structure, kind of like the one that we just saw for that other creek. And even this one has like a siren or something on it. You see that blue light and a faded sign saying do not trespass or whatever or something. I don't know. I don't know what the sign says. This is yet another creek that I know nothing about. This area for official use only, closed to the public. All the fun things you find on the side of the Clinch River below Mountain Hill Dam. All of this property, Department of Energy, DOE property, government property, all of it. And it goes for miles and miles and miles and miles. You can't get off your boat on the right side of the river here going downstream at all at least you're not supposed to even a closed off culvert there's an open culvert and then a closed one don't know where these go i'm definitely not to my spot yet and here we are the concrete wall or dam or whatever you want to call this that was not here 20 years ago on the other side of this is a pond and guess what's in the pond okay as i spoke about on my previous video when i was in high school we were tasked to do a puff piece about what they were doing to clean up oak ridge we got a grand tour of ORNL, Y12, and the K25 gaseous diffusion plant. K25 has had its name changed multiple times. That site is an absolute disaster. In fact, that site is right over there. And this pond is right next to that site. Now the Department of Energy guide, or whoever it was, that took us around K25 took us back to this pond. And what we saw 
was a railroad that was going into the pond. And we asked, why is there a railroad going into this pond right next to the gaseous diffusion plant? And what that guy told us is that they dumped material that was radioactive into that pond. Now he was okay with it because they had this nice little monitoring station to monitor the water that's exiting that pond directly here into the Clinch River. We were parked right at the monitoring station. To the right of us was the pond and to the left of us was the Clinch River. We could see it. And on top of the monitoring station was a beaver nest. Beavers were building a nest right on top of their station. Now there was one guy that was with me, I don't remember his name, one kid, and he said that him and his dad caught trout in the Clinch River down here a lot. And he basically said he would never eat a trout again out of the Clinch River. Which, I don't blame him. I wouldn't either. Now you have to think, you know, that pond had unrestricted access to the Clinch River for who knows how many years, from the Manhattan Project till the late 1990s. And then they built this concrete wall and other stuff right here. So all this stuff is less than 20 years old. And you gotta realize, you know, birds, ducks, other animals, they can get into that pond still and catch something and bring it out here. So you still have a problem of contamination in the water, just not as bad as it used to be. And I'm talking about radioactive contamination. Now that is a big skipjack head. Catch a hundred pound radioactive catfish, maybe. Like I said earlier, all this stuff went in the water for years and years and got flushed down river. So you could literally catch a catfish maybe in like upper Guntersville and it will have a radioactive chip in it. That'd be a nice thing to have in your gut. And what's even better, they commercial fish down there. So some of that is going to markets or, you know, restaurants. Whoa. Already getting a bite. That's a really slow bite. Or that could have been the boat. I don't know yet. That might have been the boat. <laughs> yeah, that was the boat correcting itself. Now I am fishing next to this structure. And there's really nothing in the water that screams that there's gonna be fish here. But I'm going to give it a try anyway. There's actually striper fishermen in the area. So maybe I'll get a big striper on the boat. This skipjack is really, really fresh. And striped bass, they love fresh skipjack just as much as flathead catfish. Put a couple out in the main channel. If I don't catch anything here, I can go upriver just a little bit. There's a yet another creek that flows into the main river here. And they don't have that one blocked off. They just have signs everywhere saying, don't get off on the shore. I guess I put a nice head way out in the middle of the channel. And I'm smelling a skunk. There's a skunk nearby. Hopefully that's not a sign of what's gonna happen on my boat today. All right, let's see what I can catch. Whew. So something I've noticed at this spot is the abundance of mosquitoes. That pond is going stagnant and I'm getting a fish. <laughs> I 
Well, that was good timing. Oh, is he still there? He might be swimming upstream. Maybe not. This is actually the second bite I've gotten today. Got a bite on the outside one and missed whatever this was. Probably a small cat. Well, that was good timing. Well, as I was saying, there's a lot of mosquitoes here, which are coming from that pond. So you gotta think, am I getting bit by radioactive mosquitoes right now? Leave a comment below of what you think. Get my thermocell going here. There we go. Maybe this will keep the mosquitoes away from me. And another boat. Having two bites already, things are looking good. If only I can hook up with something. <laughs> Is that moving? I'm getting bites on the two over here. And this one had moved from out here back here. Wonder if there's a fish on there. Nope. Must be little ones hitting it and making it bounce downstream. There is a little bit of current going on here. Oh wow, that almost looks like a gar bite. Huh. Well, some action is better than no action. Come on, take it, take it, take it. Ah. Oh, go down, go down, go down, go down. Hook up. I think there's a bunch of little fish in the area. I guess it, it is time to downsize my hook. Although it did go into the head, spun around, went into the head. That's not good. I'm gonna put a small piece out, give it like 10 minutes and then I'm moving. I don't have my night filming lights with me, so I'm not filming or gonna be fishing after dark. And it's going to be dark soon. If you can't catch them with a big piece, go small. Maybe that will be my lucky piece of bait. Got to stay legal. Is that a fish? Oh, that was a slow takedown. It's still there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's still here. Oh. <laughs> hmm. 
patience has paid off. Oh, am I getting a double now? <laughs> and that's the small piece. If it's a small fish out there, here you get hooked. All right. Now if I can get them in the boat so I'm not skunked. <laughs> There is current here, so it's making them feel heavier than normal. Still fun to catch. Nice little blue. All right, how am I going to get them in the boat? Awesome. I don't know if the other one got hooked up or not. It's almost too big to boat flip or my grips. Cool. In your mouth. Oh no, no, stop, stop, death roll. Okay, I'll bring you in. <laughs> muddy, muddy, muddy. This guy's been on the bottom. There we go. Is this a radioactive catfish? Slimy catfish. Nice blue. Cool. I really wished I had a Geiger counter. Then I could run it on him to see if he has any radioactivity in him. But I didn't rent one for this video. Maybe I'll try it in the future. I don't know. Leave a comment below if you think I should bring a Geiger counter with me out on my fishing trips. And you see the mud on him. He's been on the very bottom. Knocking up all that old waste. All right, I'm gonna let him go, let him grow. <laughs> if he will let go, there we go. Cool, let's check this rod and reel here and see if there's a fish on it. Might be swimming around. Nope, nothing. That's funny. I made a little piece here to catch a fish that size and ended up on one of the bigger pieces. They probably chewed it down to the point where he got hooked. Oh wow, yeah. They were hitting on it. Knocked it off the hook. Well, it's starting to get dark and I don't have my night filming equipment, my lights. So I'm going to go ahead and call it. This has been a successful trip. I caught a catfish and there's nothing really special about this area other than a radioactive pond and a bend in the river and technically I'm on the wrong side of the bend I should be on the inside of the bend over there but I'm not or at the creek mouth up there where there's actual water coming into this water where there's a ton of gizzard shad and other bait fish like bluegill maybe skipjacks who knows what's in there I saw some activity when I passed it up which is a good sign that means I should have been fishing it instead of right here at least I caught a nice catfish next to the radioactive pond. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and may have learned something new. If you do me a huge, huge favor, hit that thumbs up if you like this video and to help my channel out. I know a lot of people like catch and cook videos, but that would be a really bad idea around here. As I've shown you guys in these three videos. And as always, I want to thank you guys for taking your time out of your day to watch this video. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm hung up. <laughs> so there's something down there. Maybe that's what's attracting the fish. Yep, hung. Well, I will uh, get this unhung and head back to the ramp. 
So thanks again, guys, for watching my video. I really, really hope to see you guys next time. I think it's just about time for me to hit some good fishing spots instead of places I've never really fished before. Thank you again.